So a lot of conferences when I go, depending on the size of the room, nobody ever sits on the front row. They don't put themselves out there anymore. When we're children, we not only sit on the front row, we sit on the floor. And we're raising our hands and asking questions and we're shouting out things like, why are you wearing stupid red shoes? Right? We have no fear. Now, along the way, we start to learn that you have to change a little bit. But if we change too much, we never go back to the front row again. We only sit on the back row. And by the way, I sit on the back row all the time. This is not pointing anybody out here. It's just conceptual. Red shoes living, the reason it's called red shoes living is to live your life out on the edge, to put yourself out there, wherever that is for you, because we're all different. For some people, it's loud. For some people, it's very subtle and very quiet. We've worked with, you know, loud leaders. We've worked with uh, quiet leaders, and everybody has this component of red shoes living. The reason why the philosophy makes sense is you can apply the philosophy and framework in your business, and it doesn't stop there. When you leave and you go home, you take it home with you. The philosophy starts all over again, and there's all kinds of stories that we could talk about in terms of putting yourself out there. My head of sales for EMEA when I ran the tech company, um, Steve Rare, one of my dearest friends, heard me give this talk. About a month later, his mother passes away at 92 years old, sitting with his father at that time at the service and says, Dad, do you have any regrets? Because I talk about this, regret minimization. We get one life. Live your life to the fullest. Put yourself out there. When we make mistakes, learn. You're going to be human. But just you know, be the best version of yourself. And his dad looked at him, also in his 90s, and said, yeah, I do, Steve. I think we all have some regrets. And he said, is there one that really gets to you? And he said, yes. You and I have in common motorcycles. We've loved motorcycles. They read a book years ago about a gentleman that rode his motorcycle around the world. And he said, I always wanted to do it and I just always thought there would be a better time and I've learned there's never a good time. And he looked at Steve and he said, so Steve, no matter where you are in your life, if, if something like that's important to you, do that now. So fast forward from that event, two months after that, Steve comes over from London, calls me and says, hey, I'm here for sales meetings. Is there some time during the week that I can meet with you? And I live in Park City, Utah. He comes up to Park City on a Saturday morning. We have breakfast. He's very nervous, very proper British gentleman. And I can tell he's trying to tell me something. And as he's going through this, I said, Steve, tell me you're not going to quit, which made it worse on Steve. And he really started to kind of slow down. And he tells me this whole story that I just partly told you. And he looks at me and he says, so Lonnie, here's the deal. I'm going to step away from my role as the GM uh, or head of sales for Europe. I've convinced my wife somehow amazingly to do this with me. We've been saving money and I'm gonna ride my motorcycle around the world for a year. We figured out when we need to ship it, how we're gonna do it, and now he's really moving into the story and I'm sitting there very stoic and quiet. And I pause, or he pauses for a minute. I, st I said, Steve, I've got one question for you. And I can see he's getting nervous, he's touching his face, and I said, can I go with you? And what I told him in that moment was, you're exactly the type of person we want in this organization. And Steve, if I'm still with this organization when you get back, I want you to come back here. I can't promise you'll have the same role. It's not fair to those that might be coming up, but I want you here. That's Red Shoes living. That's living your life to the fullest. Even though it's gonna be at the detriment of me for a year or of our company, I know you're out being the best version of yourself. And he said, Lonnie, we're not gonna leave for about three or four months. If you'll allow me, I want to find my replacement, and I will hit every single number you've asked me to hit this year. Now, the trust I had with this individual because of who he was, I said, absolutely. Sure enough, he finds his replacement, who turns out to be equally as good as Steve, and now they're best friends. Steve hit every one of his numbers. He rode his motorcycle around the world, documented the whole thing. And by the way, he said the most consistent thing with all the countries and the people that he met for him and his wife was the kindness that people showed him along the way. He came back, he's now working for the organization I have since left to do this full time. And he and, and uh, Phil, who he hired, came to Park City, we sat down and we reminisced about what an amazing Red Shoes experience. Incredible human being. 